Hey, you guys, it's Dr. Carmen Bryant. Welcome to my channel. Thank you guys so much for your patience. I haven't been here in the last uh, week or two. Thank you guys for being so understanding. As you guys know, I am moving into a new office. And so I had to find the space and I had to sign the lease and I had to go and we had to go look at the uh, space and I have other people coming in to look at the space. And so next month I'll be packing. So just to let you guys know, give you an update on what I'm doing. So I haven't been on um, videos for the last week or two, except for the lives. I, I make sure that I come on all the lives on Sunday, but just to get, you know, give you guys an idea of what I'm doing. And so having to do that uh, is, is a little tedious. So I appreciate you guys with your patience and waiting for me, but at least you'll know this one thing is that when I do come back, I'll be on fire and ready, you know, with topics and, and new discussions and whatever we're going to do. But I do want it to, I just wanted to come on today because, um, you know, I've talked to several different people and, and from time to time, it gets to a point where, um, you know, uh, there are things that just get up under my skin, especially as a trauma professional, as a mental health professional, as an advocate for those that go through domestic violence. And as you guys know, um, narcissist abuse is domestic violence. It just happens to be a person that probably has narcissistic personality disorder, uh, but it is domestic violence. And so I'm an advocate for those male and female, both, uh, and, and the LBGT community it doesn't matter. You know, abuse is abuse. Uh, domestic violence is domestic violence. And so I'm, I'm an advocate at helping those and especially bringing you, you know, a kind word or comfort, you know, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm like that. Um, I recall listening to, um, uh, a story that the Honorable Bishop Jakes told. And what he said was, is that when his mother had surgery, there was a nurse that was attending her after the surgery, but she was just rough. And he says that, um, you know, his family was pretty upset at how, you know, rough he was, she was handling um, his mother. And then that evening, I'm on the balcony, y'all. So people just allow big country folks. My bad, y'all. I know you probably heard it. <laughs> but um, so the second nurse that would come in in the evening time um, was very gentle, very caring. His mother loved this nurse um, and, and just really loved. Um, I mean, she was gentle with her, just very kind. And so he asked her, you know, um, you and her are both in the same profession. You're doing the same type of work. I don't understand why is it that you are more gentle with what you do as opposed to the other nurse. And what the nurse said was, and this is just something for you guys to know, that what the nurse said was is that she she had had the exact same surgery. So she knows exactly, you know, what she's going through, how she's feeling, you know, wound care and everything. So she's more compassionate, you know, uh, and, and she's more understanding. And so for those of you here that have been through this, especially myself as a counselor, as an advocate, as a trauma professional, as a coach, you know, I, I am, you know, I am adamant about helping people come through because I'm going to use my military skill, what I've learned in the military to, to bring through, you know, bring people, people through a traumatic time and a hard time by sometimes giving them that extra boost and I'll use the military skills. It's just ingrained in me. I'll do that. You know, come on, you got to do this. Get up, you know, stop being a punk. Get up. You can do this, you know, but one thing that I'll never do. And, and one thing that just, it's almost like scratching, like nails scratching on a chalkboard is when people are so insensitive to people that are going through or have gone through domestic violence. Number one, you can tell that you probably have never been through it the way that that person has been through it. All of us have been through our experiences, but we haven't been through the way you've been through it. Each one of us had our own, some is worse than others, you know, but who who is to measure what is worse than the other? You know, my experience may not be as bad as your experience or vice versa, you know, hopefully I said that right, vice versa. Make up my own terminology, but you know, you can't compare yourself to someone else because you don't know the strength of their mind or you don't know their past experience and what they went through and, and the strength that they've gained from what they've been through. Why were they able to get through this while the other person may have committed suicide or this other person never did make it out of the relationship? You know, um, people don't take in consideration. And one thing that I hate when you have uh, medical professionals or mental health professionals never been through it and they make comments like, you know, well, how long are you going and keep on grieving this you know it's time for you to move on you know get over it uh they don't want you you know you guys are not together you know that's very insensitive because you don't know any other history and i understand mental health we're into the emotions that's what we do we do soul care you know psych Psychology is the study of the soul, the emotions, the mindset, you know, and uh, some people are not trained in uh, trauma. Some people are not trained in domestic violence, you know, or narcissist abuse. And so 
they're not as sensitive as a person that uh, number one is trained in it, but also a person that has been through it, you know, so you understand the different stages. And yes, I always say in order to, you know, start the healing process, you have to make a decision. And some people have to make decisions that uh, for the general, you know, for people in general uh, is not a good decision, but check this out. Uh, and I was talking to someone about this very situation where women have chose not to leave the uh, relationship. And most people are like, I can't believe you choose to stay. You got the choices just like anybody else. You can get up and go and look at all the resources that are out there. Okay, they don't know that. When you've been traumatized or you've been in a relationship, um, a lot of times people don't know. Remember, I told my story. The part of the story that I told is that I, in the military, I was helping my soldiers and they were going through some things worse than me. And I was living vicariously through them to see if they can stay out of it or get away from it. And if it didn't work for them, then I didn't believe it would work for me. And yet it was working for them. They were listening to me. And, and maybe for some of them years later, I, I, I talk to them now and, and a lot of them are very successful, very successful. But you you know I was living my life through them trying to rescue myself through the soldiers and so you know with women what about the fact that you know this narcissist and she didn't even know she was with a narcissist or male could be a male too you know uh, been in a relationship with this narcissist um, and they never allowed them to work so they never got a skill training. They never got an education. They left high school and started having babies and keeping a home. And they thought that's what they were going to do, you know, be a homemaker. Some people are happy being homemakers. You know, that's a job in itself. That's a lot, you know, to manage your house and kids and a husband or wife. And, you know, uh, but imagine they didn't get any kind of skill training. They didn't get any education. Their skill training is at home, how to manage the home. And so it comes to a time where they're being so abused, they don't have any money. So how are they going to leave? You know, this woman tries to leave or this person tries to leave with the kids and ends up homeless or doesn't have any money to feed them. So don't you think the court systems will take the children and put them in a place, even though they don't understand that the husband or wife or whoever it is, is abusive. You know, they don't understand that. All they're looking at is that you can't feed your kids. You have nowhere to stay. Maybe you're staying in a car. Maybe you're staying on the street, you know, but. Um, this person um, is able to take care of the kids better than you. And so we're going to take the kids from you and place them into that environment with the abuser, not knowing that this is an abuser and, and who's who knows what that abuser is going to do to those kids in order to hurt you, to pay you back, right? So now the kids got to pay the price. And so some of these mothers have made a choice. I can't do that. I, I can't risk the safety of my children and I choose to stay in this relationship. And so they're afraid to talk to people because most people don't understand a decision because they, you know, remember that narcissist has made them self out to, to be a hero, to be this wonderful person and people believe. And so this woman or man is, you know, stuck in this relationship um, for the safety of the children or for the fact that I know that you're going to take these kids away to hurt me and I would never see my children again, won't even know where my kids are at. And so they choose to stay in this hostile relationship to, to be with their children, to be at least they have their kids. And, and for, for those that are parents, you know, I'm not agreeing with it. But I'm agreeing with it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not agreeing with it because I don't know what could possibly happen to them, the danger, and there is resources out. But if the woman or the person or the man does not have the resources or, or is afraid to leave, has been terrified or traumatized to a point where they're afraid to leave, I get it. I understand. You know, you don't want to leave. I get it. I'm a, I'm a mother. I understand. And some of you fathers, you understand, you know, and so I hate when people are so critical or so judgmental. You don't know what's on their mind. Now, I'm not talking about those people that have the opportunity to leave and choose not to leave because I love them so much. For some people, it's going to take a minute for them to wake up. You know, uh, each one of you woke up, finally woke up. And it wasn't with someone trying to bully you. I'm not going to talk to you and I don't want to have anything to do with you until for some people, though. And, you know, you guys that are in the relationships with this narcissist, you have to understand that some friends and family know what you're going through. And for the safety of their own children, for the safety of their own families. And because of the fact that they don't want to get involved with this abuser, they choose not to be in your life or they choose to keep their distance and then you're angry so you're mad you know everybody dislikes her everybody dislikes him and you know that's my choice and that's what I want to do but when you say that you say that's your choice you can't pull anybody else into your choice that's your choice 
and people have a choice not to be around you guys, you know, and then a lot of times I hear, you know, men and women, a lot of times I hear the women, you know, well, if they don't want to be with me, you know, if they don't want to accept with who I am, then we just don't be friends. We're not, we're not, we're not going to be friends. You know, we're not, we're not going to be connected. Okay. But that's your choice. That's your choice now that you want to remain in this relationship and you are trying to make them change their mind to accept the fact that you were in the relationship with this person. They have accepted the fact that you're in a relationship with this person, but for their own safety and for their children's safety and for their well-being and the fact that they're hurting seeing you being hurt and you're still blind because a lot of times you're still blind you know to the fact that this person is really torment this person is this person is dangerous you know other people see it but you don't so a lot of times we have to wait until you wake up but for those of you like i always say you still have to make up your mind you have to make a choice and when you make up when make up in your mind and you make a choice that i no longer want to be in this relationship you have to be prepared that's what all these videos are for you have to be prepared for what your mind is going to go through what your body is going to go through you know what your emotions are going to go through it's not easy to leave a person that has trauma bonded you it's not easy to leave a person that you're addicted to it's not even easy to stop smoking crack or heroin that's why people go into um you know into the treatment centers and even when they go into the treatment centers you know they tell them you are probably going to relapse you know and there's a possibility of relapsing but we'll give you all the tools you know to use to keep you from relapsing no different than being in a relationship with a narcissist you get out of the relationship you may relapse there are some people that have never re relapsed and went back i never relapsed and went back in my mind i relapsed and in my heart i relapsed because of the fact that it was a long-term relationship so, of course, I struggle back and forth, but I made up my mind. I would never, no matter what I go through, no matter what I emotionally go through, it doesn't matter. There's going to be days, it's going to be hard. There's going to be days that, you know, I'm going to be angry, you know, whatever. But I made up in my mind, I would never go back. And whatever I had to go through physically to get it out of my system, whatever I had to go through, I was going to go through. And it was a hard journey. But I had good people in my court. I had good mentorship. I had good leaders. I had sisters, you know. Uh, uh, sisters within my in my church, you know, the sisters that were there, some of them had been through the same things uh, and kept it quiet. You know, some of them were going through the same thing. Some of them were not, you know, and it was beautiful because for some, it was just that quiet, that quiet support. You know, they didn't look at you and judge you. They didn't, they, I knew, I already knew, or no one said anything. It was a quiet support. For some, it was a quiet support and the sisters were there want to get you out. We're laughing, joking type kids, kids, kids kids that's cute but we're joking laughing women you know and the people that we were around the brothers that we were around you know the sisters we were around all of us are happy-go-lucky people we laugh and joke all the time and a lot of times we do know when someone is going through something but it's not appropriate or it's none of our business to get into the business unless they bring it and say something about it and you know uh, as you guys know my mentor is Apostle Helen Sadler Helen Sadler Destiny Helper on um, YouTube you guys go check out her videos go subscribe to her channel because she will bring it to you from a spiritual perspective a biblical and spiritual perspective with the understanding that everybody is not a believer in Jesus Christ however she gives you the information and then teaches you how to apply it to you know she gives you the information and tells you to apply it to your belief system how you believe and so the same way that I teach you know I bring it to you from a mental health and experiential point of view but and and I tell you guys I am a believer and I give you information but then you have to apply it to your belief system and how you function but the most important thing is that you have to make up your mind and you have to choose to leave the relationship. You have to take a lot of things in perspective. Those mothers and those parents, you know, those fathers that are out there that, you know, you're having to make a decision to stay in a relationship on. Now, don't make up an excuse. Some people make an excuse. Don't, 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 don't use that as a crutch and say the only reason why I'm staying is for my kids. And you know for a fact that you can leave. Don't say because because we have to get beyond the excuses. Some of them are excuses and some of them is genuine, legitimate. You know what I mean? Uh, some women don't have jobs. Some women don't have transportation. Some women don't even or even men. Some men don't. Uh, and I've never heard it really from the men's perspective on, on this topic. But a lot of times I heard it from the female perspective, from the women perspective. So I give it I'm going to give it from the female perspective and what I've seen with the women. But that does not cancel out the fact that men go through it, too, because you do have um, in the LBGTQ community, uh, LBGTQ plus community. There we go. Um, in the L LBGTQ plus community, 
you also have, you know, males that are with males and one may be the um, breadwinner and one may be the homemaker. You have it in, you know, with the females, you know, one may be the breadwinner, may, one may be the homemaker. No uh, different than in the heterosexual community. One be the breadwinner, one may be the homemaker, you know, either or. So it, it falls in both categories, males and females. So I don't want to eliminate anybody uh, because it, it, it it's across the board. The abuse is across the board. Now, my, I'm sorry, you guys are shadows in my face i wasn't sure if i had dust on my or pencil on my face but uh, i apologize i know you guys like keep talking i know but um i got distracted i'm sorry but you know so it's across the board and so i'm just going to give you the information based off of what i've seen with the women but it applies to the men as well and with the women you know like i said you have some that don't even know what we don't even write checks anymore didn't know anything about balancing checkbook bank accounts paying bills anything about bills you know how do you pay the mortgage how much is the car where is the bank account how much is in the bank account you know because they do abuse you economically and financially they won't let you know what is in the bank account so what money is there you know um they give you an allowance let you or they purchase your clothes for you or buy the food that you tell them what you need and they go get it you know that power and control um some of them have never worked outside of the home so they don't know what it's like to work outside of the home don't know how to fill out an application only have a GED or a high school diploma maybe even a, um, a college education but never put it into use um, and chose to give that up to support the husband or the wife you know so there are different circumstances different you know and then think about it for those that are leaving relationships and having to go back into the work field you know to have been with your children all that time and you've never left your kids your kids have been to school but you've always been at home when your kids have coming home that's even kind of shocking for the children when they're accustomed to their parent you know one of the parents being at home anytime they come home they're comfortable they know they're going to eat when they come home then you know the parent is home then all of a sudden everything changes and all of a sudden that parent becomes a single parent and that parent is not at home that child is stressed too you know and that parent is stressed how am i going to make this i've never done this this is like the first time moving out of the house you know and 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 having to do it by yourself so there are circumstances you know so i hate when people make that comment okay when are you going to get over this okay you're going to have to move on they moved on when are you going to move on you don't know their circumstances you don't know what they've been through growing up you don't and most people don't understand narcissist abuse and that's counselors therapists medical field judges lawyers they don't understand what it's like to be in a relationship with a narcissist that is not a normal relationship that relationship right there is the most damaging relationship that anybody can ever who gets in a relationship and then you know you got to think that's not normal who gets into a relationship and purposely tries to uh, have power and control but purposely tries to hurt you purposely tries to kill your soul doesn't mind if you are the ultimate sacrifice and you commit suicide you know who does that okay so if we can say who does that obviously an abnormal person so you know that's abnormal psychology what we study and then even some of the comments that are made on youtube you know some of you guys just have to be careful some people come on and i'm just gonna say it outright you know me i'm just gonna keep it real some people just ignorant they're so smart that they're stupid and some of the comments that they make when they're telling people i've never heard of that you know i've never heard of that before so you know i've never experienced that so that I'm, i don't believe i don't believe that i don't believe that because i've never been through that nobody care what you've been through so obviously you haven't been through what they've been through. That doesn't mean that you are the answer to everything, right? So when people come on there under your comments and they start telling you that that doesn't even sound right. I don't believe that. I don't believe that because I've never experienced that before. Okay, that's the beauty of everybody having an opinion and experience. You know, smartest dumb people you'll ever meet. Just because you never experienced it doesn't mean that over billions of people on this earth that because you never experienced it, it's not true. Doesn't that sound narcissistic? Yeah. And then some people are not even narcissists when they make the uh, when they make the comment. It just is a pet peeve of mine. I hate to see people re-victimize. I just I can't stand it. You know, people making dumb comments and then people giving advice in the comment section about uh, you know about what they've experienced, not what they've experienced and their opinions about something. And I don't generally I don't believe that. And what role did you play in that? Okay, this is not a channel where we're pointing a finger back. You know, at the person, at the victim. You know, we're not poor. We're talking about narcissism and what they do, what narcissists do in the relationship. Yeah, we all play a role in relationships, but there's nothing that we do that deserves to be abused and tormented and have our children hurt the way that they're hurt. 
And so sometimes the people that make comments, they're just insensitive. They're just insane. That lets me know that they haven't really been, get with a real narcissist and then come back to the channel again. You see what I mean? And so this channel is not for everybody. And so you guys don't take to heart what people say. Some people just got to, you know, we're, that's what we're here for to educate you. And, and as you're learning not to be so sensitive, you know, even to the comments, you just, you have to just shake your head like poor, poor Tink Tink, poor little Tink Tink, you know. So you just have to kind of shake your head like, poor little Tink Tink, I'm not even going to respond. Don't even, you guys don't even put yourself out of level to respond to that stuff. You know, you just let me know. I'll delete it if I catch it, you know, but there's some people that have never been through it. And so that is really something that bothers me, especially as a professional, when people come in and they let me know what their doctor said to them. Okay, when are you going to get over this? Tell them to go to my channel. Okay, so how long are you going to grieve? Take away your eyeball. And then after a month or two, you know, two or three months while your brain is still trying to adjust to the fact that you have one eye and your brain is, and you're trying to live your life. You've lived your whole life. Let's say you're 50. You know, you lived your whole 50 years with two eyeballs. You've lived life with two eyes. Now you have one eyeball. First of all, you're ashamed that you're missing the eye. So you're trying to figure out how to cover it with a patch to try to look as normal as possible. You know, people are staring at you. Then you're trying to get an eyeball to put in there to make it look as normal as possible. Don't know how to move your eyes because you don't know how this eye is going to move. Then your brain is trying to adjust to the fact it only has one eye. So now your peripheral vision has broadened. If you ever listen to the... Um, to the um, interview with Sammy Davis Jr. where he was talking about when he lost his eye and how his brain compensated and how his uh, field of vision had gotten bigger. His brain compensated, his field of vision gotten bigger, his peripheral gotten bigger, you know, but your brain is doing a lot to compensate. Even if you lost like your hearing or you lost your sight, you know, your your senses are so, your brain is so powerful that it will, it will adjust and make every everything else keener to compensate for what you just lost. So imagine you coming out of a narcissistic relationship, you know, or even the loss of a child or a loved one, you're having to compensate. You're having to uh, learn to live life differently. And if you've been abused for a long time, you're having to live life normal and normal is awkward to you. Normal is abnormal. Your normal is, is, is abuse. So to have to live your life abnormally is your new norm because that is the healthy way to live. And some people don't know how to live healthy. So I think I've, talked enough. Hopefully I, I came on. I just wanted to bring some encouragement for the week. I just wanted to really say thank you guys a lot. Uh, the moderators, you guys should have received something by now. It is, it is Wednesday, so hopefully you received something. If not, you should get it by at least Saturday, hopefully. So, But I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for being patient with me. Just know that I'm moving from office to office and I'm having to move my stuff. I got to find storage stuff. I got to find packing containers. So I've been busy still having my clientele. Uh, and those of you that are looking for coaching, I do coaching. I am offering a nominal fee. So I'm, I'm some pretty decent discounted rates right now. I started it back in um, November, I think during the holidays to help people through the holidays. And I realized, I said, well, some of you guys don't know me. And so I said, let me give discounted prices so you guys can get to know me, talk to me, you know, see if you like, you know, and then I'll go back to my regular prices. I know you guys are waiting for the classes, but, you know, in the transition of office, you know, offices and, and doing business, I, I had to kind of put that on hold for a minute. Uh, but I am still working on the classes. It's just a little tedious, you know, because I want to give you guys good material. And I'm hoping to offer that first class, that first course for free. So you see how I teach, what I talk about, and that it kind of kind of tickle your interest so that you would want to go and purchase the other courses, you know, so I'm trying to make a few, a, a few courses and I'm working on my second book. So, you know, that's a lot of work and I got clientele, but I, I do offer coaching. So you are welcome to contact me, Dr. Carmen Bryant at outlook.com. You'll find everything underneath the uh, video. Uh, there is my email address down there. Um, also, those of you that have been donating, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. My PayPal and Cash app is underneath the video on YouTube. Um, those of you that are seeking couching, 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 those that are seeking couching, those that are seeking coaching, you know, you are welcome to email me and I will give you guys my rates, um, you know, my, my uh, rates for coaching. Uh, those of you that are seeking counseling. I cannot provide counseling for those of you outside the state of Washington because I am licensed in the state of Washington. Um, I'm hoping to, uh, in the future, seek my license in California. And I know some of you guys, seek it here, seek it here. Yeah, I remember that to take a test like in Washington, to take the exam, that's like $300. And then to keep your license up is like 125, 150. 
dollars every year and on top of that um continuing education you know those classes are like two three hundred dollars per class and we have to do 36 uh continuing education hours every two years so imagine i'm licensed in all these states who gonna pay for my license y'all who gonna pay for the testing who gonna help me because each state is the different i have to study for each exam so what i'm hoping to do because california is the closest to washington and licensing so i'm hoping to you know my next transition besides the coaching and all that to get a license in california so i'm able to provide counseling for those uh, that i can fly out to california you know once this corona thing or my Bobby is over with, you know, we're not going to be going through this forever, but, um, but so I can fly to California, you know, and some office space down there and, and see you guys, even for coaching, um, you guys stay tuned. I do, I still want to do the conferences, um, on zoom. You guys give me some time. Give me some time, y'all. I'm, I'm a busy lady. I'm a busy lady. Uh, but, uh, those of you that are wanting counseling, if you are in the state of Washington, I do offer counseling, mental health counseling, emotional counseling, behavior counseling for those outside the state of Washington uh, and inside the state of Washington. I do accept insurance outside the state of Washington. I Washington, Washington. I offer coaching. Coaching is number one to educate you about what you're going through, to educate you about narcissism, to help maneuver you. Uh, like say you're trying to leave. I can connect you with resources. Um, you know, your next step coaching, you know, just like a basketball coach, just like a football coach. We're going to coach you through the process. Uh, and I stay with you and coach you through the process. Um, those of you that um, are looking for counselors in your state too, I have a sponsored link. It is up underneath the video. It is better help dot com backslash dr carmen if you hit that link um, you will get a 10 percent discount and you can look for a counselor in your state at a nominal fee you get a 10 percent discount and if you're having monetary problems let them know because they do offer grants and so they do they charge a, a nominal fee where you can um find a counselor in your state a licensed counselor in your state now some of you use the terminology i need someone that specializes in narcissist abuse well look for someone that specializes in domestic violence uh, psychological abuse ask them if they understand ptsd complex ptsd talk to them you know you can always i always encourage people to interview the counselor you know and so you can interview the counselor ask them questions ask them what they know you know and use that terminology instead of you're not a narc specialist there is no such thing as a narcissist specialist when it comes to the counseling field is is uh you got trauma professionals you have uh you know marriage and family you have child specialists you know not uh domestic violence if they specialize in domestic violence uh it just so happened if they if they choose to go further and study about narcissism, that's something they're doing on their own. There is no certification for narcissistic uh, um, abuse. You know, uh, there is no certification. There is no licensure, licensure, licensure. Yep, that, that word. There is no license for uh, narcissistic specialists. That's something that we choose to do on our own. We branch off in our own little fields and, and do, you know, specialize in our own little fields. So I think I've talked enough. I appreciate you guys. You make sure you subscribe. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. You can find me on Facebook as well. It is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse or Psychological Health Consultants and Services. Um, also, my mentor is on YouTube. It is Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. Make sure you subscribe and share her videos. Awesome, awesome woman, full of information. It's like you poke her and all of a sudden all this revelation comes out. You know, I wouldn't poke her, but you know, you ask her questions. She's just a wealth of knowledge, just a wealth of knowledge. You just, she's, she's powerful. I love that lady. Um, my mentor, my pastor, uh, I'm not, that's not just my mentor, just to let you guys know, there's a lot of us that are mentored by her. She's our senior pastor. She's our spiritual parent. Uh, but I love that lady. She, she sacrifices a lot and she truly loves people and you can hear it in her videos. And I am a product of her work. And so, yeah, I love that lady. Yeah, I would tell you what she went through with me, but we'll leave that for another story. I'll let her tell that story one day. <laughs> but hey, I appreciate you guys. Appreciate, appreciate. I think it's getting late. I think I'm sleepy. Appreciate, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much. I hopefully made you smile for today. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. You guys go and be great. <laughs>